Okay. So let's look at the end product guys before we start off so that you know you get a we get a good hang of what is what we're going to build today. There's a lot of prerequisite that you'll be requiring Sai Vishal. So hang in there and there could, there's so many questions that will be coming uh, for that. Okay. Thank you for the background. Anyways, guys, so let's first begin with the concept in mind. Okay. Now, how many of you have built a regression equation and how many of you have built a classification equation? So here we're going to break down into certain elements. Okay. The, the elements that we are going to be breaking down are first, we'll be obviously building the ML models. Then second, we're going to have an interface like this that will allow us to choose the age, you know, the gender such as like this, or let's say the BMI of the person, um, the number of children that are there, smoker or not, and which region they come from, right? And then click on predict, which will then predict how much insurance amount the company, the insurance company should charge this particular customer, right? So basically imagine this, this application is getting built for a particular insurance representative or let's say an end customer also, right? What they want to see is basically, um, you know, fill in a certain details about themselves and then get an, you know, an estimate of what the insurance amount is going to be looking like for them, right? So that's the end goal. You, you have a bunch of parameters that you can plug in to get an output, which will then be charged to the customer, the end user, or let's say the sales representative uh, that is selling the insurance to be able to charge that customer, right? And as you can see, a lot of parameters will decide how much that amount is going to be, right? And the ML algorithm that we are going to be using, making is going to help us generate this thing, right? And then what we are going to do, essentially what we're going to do is generate an equation that will help us predict this particular uh, value or the insurance amount that the customer should be paying, right? Nice. Now, once we have set the context, uh, I want you all to mark a yes. If you have understood how this particular app is going to be, you know, what, uh, sorry, how, what are we going to be doing and what's the end goal for this particular session? Indian rupees, obviously, uh, Vivek, you want to code it, right? It's only coded for dollars right now. So we will show it within dollars. But yeah, if, if you want to do it with in Indian dollars, uh, Indian rupees, then you'll have to code it accordingly, right? So for now it's, it is in dollars. So we'll continue with that. Okay, cool. So the setup that you will be needing guys, uh, again, I'm not going to spend so much time on the setup, but I'll briefly tell you what are the setup that I have used to get this app uh, launched on the Heroku uh, app. Okay, nice. Thank you for the inputs guys. So once we have all of these things set up first, let me show you a mini version uh, of how we are going to be used doing it in Excel. And then we will get back into the coding and all of that. Right? So first let's look at how the data looks like what and how we're going to build the model uh, and all of that. Okay. So this is our data guys. Um, what this what this data contains is age, uh, the gender, BMI, you know, children, how many children that particular person has, uh, is he a smoker? Yes or no. And different regions, right? So you have four different regions. Imagine, you know, uh, all of these insurance companies are breaking it into multiple regions. And so each line represents one customer. And there is already a way of, uh, you know, charging a customer that is there within this, right? So if you, if, if this is our Y variable, the, the charges is our Y variable, what kind of model do you think we'll be building guys here? 
So if charges is our model, uh, you know, the Y variable, what kind of model will we be building here, here, here guys? I'll give all the codes and all of that guys. Uh, so don't worry about the codes. You'll not miss anything. And I've also provided the link to that thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, this is the, this is the, uh, regression equation. Yes. It's going to be a regression equation because you're, you're predicting a value at the end of the day, right? Multi Indian regression. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So let's, Let's first look at how this particular app is going to be looking like within Excel and what we are doing, right? So first we'll have data, right? With the data, we need to build a model or an equation that we can use on the app that I'm showing here, right? There is an equation in the background that is getting used here. And that's the thing that we need to build, uh, build first. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take a much more smaller version to quickly create and show you a, a simple version that I'm, uh, you know, simple equation that we can be using it in the app and the app, you know, the thing is going to be looking like this, right? So I have three different variables. I have charges and I'm going to go to the data tab and data tab and do some data analysis here. And I'm going to build a really quick and dirty regression equation here. Right. So the, the Y range is obviously this particular column here. X range is going to be these three columns here. Okay. I'm going to show the low labels and, um, and I'm just going to say rest of the things. Uh, okay. And just say, okay, to get the final outcome like this. Right. So as you can see here, um, uh, ignore all of the statistics. We are learning to build the app, right? So we are not going to be discussing whether it's an accurate model, not an accurate model, improved model, or none of that. I know everybody's going to be mastering that someday or the other, but this focus is going to be on how we're going to use the outcome of the regression analysis in our application, right? That's the focus area. Cool guys. So essentially what we did is we took the data, um, when we are doing the Python app, we will be using all the columns, but in Excel, I can only show so many columns, um, uh, and then get the coefficients, but whatever we are doing here, it holds true for what app application that we are building there. Okay. Anyway, so let's look at this. What I did is I took the data, um, and then I built a model and the model gave me an output like this. Right now let's copy this output to this particular location here. Right now, now what this means is that the insurance amount that I should charge a customer is dependent on the coefficients that we have here. Right. Which means the insurance amount, the insurance amount, insurance amount that you want to give to the customer is dependent on all of these inputs. So how, how will that equation look like? It will be the intercept, right? Plus, obviously you want to give the age into the user input that uh, is provided, right? So for that, I'll just provide a user input here. And I'm just going to place this a little bottom here somewhere. Sorry, I just placed it somewhere here. And I'm going to place this here. And this is going to be the user input, right? So user inputs are age of, let's say, 25, a BMI of, let's say, 20 and children zero. And, you know, he's expecting a uh, insurance amount here, right? So insurance amount is obviously going to be the intercept, right? The intercept plus the age provided into the, the coefficient that we have for the age there, right? Plus the BMI into the BMI coefficient that we have here. 
plus zero into the children coefficient that we have here, right? So basically, if I just simply put this equation in place and I do format it into the in this particular uh, way. Uh, in fact, let me do currency. That way, it's much more better. And as you can see, last thing is the formatting. Uh, you know, somebody was asking, can we do it in Indian rupees, right? You see, in whichever format I put this, that's the output that it will be there, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter which format, which numbers you are making it in. It's it holds true for anything. Is the final thing that amount if you want to put it in rupees, dollars, or whatever it is, that's up to you, right? But we are doing in dollars. This is available in dollars, so I'm just going to be using dollars in this situation. Fair enough. Anyway, so uh, so so now now that you know, now that you know that yes, we take all of these inputs and then you know take the user inputs. The user comes in, plugs in all of these details, and then he gets the insurance amount that that he should be paying to the company, right? Now, obviously, if I increase the age uh, and increase the BMI, let's say, and let's say improve the children, you'll see the insurance amount will automatically be shooting up right because we're changing these parameters and so quite similarly if you reduce it like if you're if you're 21 your body mass index is let's say you know 20 ish uh, you have zero children right so you will you will lower your uh, insurance amount if you are going down that particular uh, way right so that's what this app will help us do it will give us the it will basically help us uh, help the customer get to know what the insurance amount he should be paying uh, to that insurance company basis his details that is provided right so essentially this is what we are doing but we are this is again an excel way of most simplified way of doing it but what we will be doing it is is in this format right so we will build a python model and then we will make it into a format that we can actually launch it on a server so that it can be usable, right? So end of the course, right? End of the session, this is what you will be finally building, right? A much more modified version of it, okay? And I'm going to simplify this a little bit, uh, not make it too heavy so that everybody can execute this, okay? Now, now let's get into the coding part. Uh, I hope everybody has understood what our end objective is and a small version I have created on Excel and showed you so that you can know what the end objective is going to be looking like or what we're going to be doing, right? Cool. Uh, I'll ask another question. If if you got the context, please say yes. And I, another thing is I'll ask another question. Um, how many of you use Anaconda or PyCharm? PyCharm. Uh, that will help me decide how we are going to code it. Okay, cool. Okay, now whichever uh, whichever format you use it, guys, um, whichever format you use, you're going to require a new um, PyCharm and Anaconda. Okay, no problem. Okay, so we're not going to be going to be using uh, a notebook here because notebooks are not really good for applications. We are going to be using .py file, right? So even if you're using Anaconda and Jupyter Notebook, what you want to do is you want to place all of the code within a dot pi file, whatever we're going to be using here, right? So that way it's going to be a lot easier for you to make the app, right? So that's the thing. Now, so let's let's set it up uh, how we are going to be doing this particular thing, okay? So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you the structure of the files that will be used, uh, this thing, not all of the files, but I'm going to also share this location with everybody here. I hope everybody has this location 
this is the location uh, that we are going to be using. Um, the code that I'm going to be using is going to be here, and we're going to use this app dot uh, simple um, a code here, right? So there's a, there's this bunch of code that is there, and for creating model, there's this another bunch of code that will be that will be used, right? So we're going to use those uh, essentials. And for launching it into Heroku, there is going to be another process, right? So uh, we're going to be doing that process also. And I'll, I'll show you how we're going to be doing some of those things also. Okay. So that being said, that's the coding part that we'll be doing. And I'm going to be using PyCharm for um, building this out. Okay. Hope you can see my screen, uh, this uh, PyCharm. And I'm going to start it from basics so you'll not have to worry that you know how i'm going to, uh, how i'm going to be doing it or how it's going to be done okay data is present within that same link data is present within the same link right this is the data okay awesome Cool. So if you're in PyCharm or let's say if you're in Anaconda, what you can do is you can go to spider, use spider. Um, and then, um, okay, this, this is not visible. Do you want me to awesome? So let's, let's create a new project, right? Um, and before I do that, basically, um, what I do is I come to this, uh, Heroku, like I use this, uh, you know, this, uh, what do you say the GitHub desktop? And what I do is uh, I basically, you know, create a new repository here, right? So basically, uh, I'm going to call this as a, let's say stream lit uh, Heroku insurance app. Okay, live. So I'm going to create this uh, into a location and I'm going to in initialize this with Python, the typical things that you need to do. And I'm just going to put a mid license on this, right? So I'm just going to create this uh, app name, create repository. Now, even if you don't know this, that's okay for now, right? But you create that uh, a repository and then what you do is you publish the repository and I'm going to keep this not private and then publish this repository. So what this does is basically, if I now look at GitHub, so basically this one, this repository that we created is uh, available for us, right? We have your readme file, this one, you have the license, git ignore and git ignore and uh, git attributes, all of this avail available, right? So I'm gonna share this GitHub link to you so that uh, you can basically copy this or fork this and then uh, use it. But this is this is primarily what I will be using uh, in this place, right? So anything I create will be in this particular uh, location that I will be creating, okay? So I'm gonna say a new uh, project, obviously, and I'm gonna choose the file, the location to be the one that I just recently created, right? So it's going to be this one. And, and I'm going to use uh, a, a new environment or a virtual environment for me to basically do this, right? Or, or some, you know, existing interpreter, right? So, uh, you know, if, if you don't have any, uh, you know, interpreter already available with you, what you can do is you can just do a Conda env environment or you can do a virtual environment, whichever you choose to be doing it uh, with a 3.7 Python version, right? And then go ahead and create that uh, interpreter. But I, I already have certain interpreters with me. So I'm just going to be using that directly, right? So that I don't have to reinvent of uh, reinvent a lot of a uh, lot of these things uh, again, right? So I'll just say create. And basically now what's happening is uh, the app is getting created in this particular location and you know, soon it will be in the folder that we have here, right? So this is the stream app that 
like they're going to use. Okay. Cool. There are a couple of things that comes here in PyCharm. Uh, you want to just say fix and just say config, configure automatically and it will automatically add this. Okay. Awesome. So now, now we have this readme file that you're seeing here, right? Um, um, and obviously, uh, we'll have to see how we can now start creating the stuff within this particular thing, right? So here, first thing I'm going to create is a Python file. And I'm going to call this as a create model. Right? So this is the create model file. Basically, we are going to take this data in, right, and build a model, and then just save the models output into the same folder here, right. So we can then pick up and then use that in the app. That's what we are doing here, right. So let me just go there to the window that I have open here. Okay, awesome. Okay, now that I am here, this is where we will start the model building process. I'm just setting up a couple of things. Okay, the create model. Okay, so this is what we're going to do in the create model, guys. What we'll do is we'll we'll use this uh, library called PyCaret. It's a much more better uh, organized package which helps you create these uh, models quickly and evaluate them and then uh, dump that model in a situation where we can use it. Right? Uh, when I say dump the model, basically what what I'm trying to say is this this coefficients that we have right it will dump it in a file that we can later pick up and then use in the application right so that's what we are going to be doing now once i'm here i'm just going to say import pandas as pd because again we require this from pycaret dot regression from pycaret.regression, we're going to import all of it. Right? So th these are the two, two lines of codes um, that we will be requiring. And I'm just going to paste them. Uh, I mean, you can just uh, use them or save, save them. I'm just going to put that in the chart there. Escalon, you can use uh, Prathamesh but the only difference is that you're going to be doing a lot of things on your own, right? So basically that that's the uh, thing. And then obviously within this particular thing, you also want to create like install the PyCaret package because th that's going to be requiring for us to do that, right? So I'm just going to say install the PyCaret package and it will automatically be doing that PyCaret package in the background. It will be installing that for us, right? Anyway, so once we have imported both this uh, library, I mean, both these um, libraries, the pandas and pycaret, what we next need to do is basically write, import the data, right? So obviously you all know how we can import the data. Data is equal to, and I'm just going to say pg dot read underscore CSV, right? And at this point, I don't have the data in this folder. So I'm just going to take it from the previous uh, folder that I have already used, right? So I have this location and I'm just going to paste it in this application that we built right now. And where is my application? This one, right? So I paste this data. And if you want this data, it's already there in the GitHub link that I've already given. So just use that link uh, for it, right? So I'm just going to read that uh, data and it's going to be insurance.csv, right? So we've read the data. Hopefully this installation will be complete by then. Okay, it's going on. 
So let it be going on. Cool. Next, obviously, once that uh, the the uh, you know this one is uh, we have imported data. What we now need to do is we basically now need to build a model and then try to dump that particular model uh, as a deployment file or something like that. Right. So that file we need to um, you know create a file that will help us deploy the model or the application. Right. So for that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this, uh, uh, you know, the setup uh, of function of this particular, um, what do you say, the pi caret, and it basically works like this, right? So you have a setup uh, file that you require, right? Um, you need to basically give the data that is there, right? And then you have to give the target variable that you're going to be using for this particular model. Right. So in our, in our case, the target model is going to be charges, right? So I'm just going to be saying charges, C-H-R-G-S, charges. That's the right one. I'm also going to give a session ID so that, uh, you know, we can replicate what the outcomes that we have, here, right? So there are some of the parameters that we just need to uh, give guys so norm normalize we are going to obviously normalize all of the variables that are there and this is a quick and simple way of doing a lot of things you can still use sklearn and then use pickles to export the models but again this helps us sort of save a lot of time and then do things much more quickly while we are doing uh, building things um, or experimenting on things or creating drafts and all of that thing In, even for live also uh, i find this pi caret um, a lot useful uh, and saves a lot of time uh, actually right so i'm going to say normalize is uh, this true then i'm i'm just going to also give some polynom uh, you know polynomial uh, features features is going to be true again this is doing some um, basically feature engineering also if you want to create some of these features uh, there right and then obviously there are some uh, trigno trigonometry. I hope I got that spelling correct. Features uh, is equal to true, right? So these are like some additional features that will be automatically created, guys, right? And then action is equal to true. You if you want. Uh, Uh, to know more about this, please build the model and then deploy it immediately. Anyways, I'm going to pin any of the numeric features uh, that are there. So bin numeric features is equal to, and I'm going to give age comma BMI as the features that we want to pin. Right. Uh, this is going to be BMI. Okay. So we basically have all of these uh, by character still uh, installing. That's okay. Anyway, so you have all of these set of parameters. You have the data, you have the target, cha target variable session ID, and then you want to normalize all of the variables because again, you need to normalize. That's a, that's the step that we will be doing, uh, you know, that we take for converting all of these variables uh, to, um, you know, uh, we be converting this particular uh, variables into any of the things that we want to be creating, right? So that's that's one of the things. And obviously, then you have polynomial features. Basically, you're creating some additional features, uh, you, um, you know, uh, and to ensure that your model is much more accurate uh, within this particular thing, right? And then there are a couple of other things that are there, which are just best kept there. Uh, you want to read the PyCaret documentation to just understand some of these parameters, right? And I'm going to do the binning. If you've done any regression equation, basically, you will know that uh, it binning sort of helps you um, 
create the model in a much more better way. And so we're going to be doing the binning there also, right? So these are some of the things uh, that, that we have created. And then obviously now uh, we're going to build the um, model here uh, in this particular thing. We're just going to be creating a logistic regression in this particular scenario, right? And then not really logistic regression, linear regression, sorry. Uh, linear regression and I'm going to say create model, sorry, underscore model. As you can see, it's a lot easier to create uh, such uh, models with a pie character, right? So I'm, I'm just going to give the LR model within this particular thing, linear regression, right? And then that's it. That's the modeling process, right? So we build the model now and then we want to save the model uh, the LR model that we created, and then we just give a model name here, right? The model name is going to be uh, something, right? So I'm just going to give, let's say, deployment underscore, and obviously you want to give a date to it, right? So it's uh, 10, sorry, 11, 10, 2020. Right, so that's that's really the uh, piece of code that we have within which we we are able to create this. Right, so to save this and uh, this is good enough. Okay, something seems to be wrong here. The environment has wrongly been set up, so we might have to change this a little bit. Okay, so we, ideally we should be able to run this. Okay, so I'm just going to run this and let's see how this is going to be working like, right? So there seems to be um, PyCaret not installed properly. So what, I, what we have to do is let's see if we can pip install PyCaret. takes a couple of seconds to build the thing. Somehow it didn't install it that properly. But yeah, let's see if this is going to be working the magic. So you want to install all of these uh, you know, libraries well ahead so that it uh, works properly. And obviously we are, I'm, I'm also going to be installing the stream light so that that's also going to be working there. Okay, so meanwhile, this is getting installed. Uh, everybody till here, you have understood what we have done, right? Basically, what we have done is we have imported the PyCaret regression module. We set that up. It takes simple parameters uh, to be you know updated so that you can create the model, right? So you you take all of that pre-processing steps, right? Like data data cleaning, data missing treatment, right? All of those things, a new feature, all of those things are basically done by the setup. You then create the linear regression model and then you save the model in the same folder that it's uh, there, right? So 
these all steps are done very quickly. You can use sklearn um, and all of that to basically do it and do it. Why to install Pygame? No, it's it's PyCarrot actually. Pygame, I don't know if it's that will be required or not, but yeah, PyCarrot will be definitely be required. Okay, so this should be almost over. Anyway, so while that is getting done, guys, uh, we need to now move on to like create the app also, right? So what we will do is if you have that create model, right? Uh, what you can do is you can create another Python file and this one we're going to call this as app dot app dot py right you're going to create a new Python file call it app dot py and once that app dot py is uh, created this is where we are going to write all the application code and and see how that application is going to be turning out to be for us right basically the code to do this stuff here, right? So we'll really take it from the basic steps and then we'll inc keep incrementing stuff there. Okay, I think so this should be done. Now, if I run this, hopefully there should be no error. Okay, why is it saying there is no module called PyCaret? Hmm. Okay, error that you'll have to see Rohit. I don't know. I've never encountered right now. This is not working. <laughs> Let's see how we can do that. Okay, some of this pi carrot one is not working as easily. Huh. Capital C apps. Let's check that. No, no, it's it should be pi carrot itself. Ah, something uh, was wrong with the spelling. Yeah, so trigonometry, again, there is the spelling mistake. So trigonometry. Yeah, so that is cool. Save. Okay, and let me run it again. Seem like, seem like it's working now. Yeah. So run, uh, the entire thing will be run. And basically now what will happen is uh, you'll see that there will be a model file getting created. So let, let it be done first and then we'll wait for it to get done. The model should be created, but there might be some hiccups that we are facing. Some issues with this display ID. 
Yeah, just ignore that for now. Let's zero it if it works. But I'm I'm getting another error here. Again, this is a part of all of this creating applications and all of that. But let's see what this error seems. None type object has no attribute display ID. Why should display ID be there? So let's uh, look at the pie carrot. Might have something changed. It's okay, time to time, sometimes pie carrot libraries also get updated. Anyway, so let's look at supervised and regression. And let's say regression. setting up environments. Okay, so import regression, this one. So non boot HTML is equal to false, right? So we are not going to use any of this HTML file that comes in. Okay, so HTML is going to be false. Mm. For non notebook environment. Okay. Seems like done. So let's see how this is working. Typically, you, you want this particular one to come out as an outcome. And if that is coming out, then it should be working. Let's see, hope this time it works. It's building the model, let's see. Hmm. And meanwhile, that is happening. What I'm going to do is also install Streamline. Right, so it's going to be pip install stream. Right. Yeah, so basically this is done. Uh, let's see if we have that, yes. So if you'll see now, uh, deployment 11.11.0.2020.pkl, there's this pickle file uh, getting dumped, right? So basically all this code did is this part of it, where, you know, um, you took the data, you built a model and then created this file. That is this coefficient, coefficients that we have. So this is this is now created, right? Now, now we need to use this in, in the app like this to be able to create or have that app uh, live and running, right? So for that, what we will do is, uh, let's save this, but we'll create another Python file here. Did I create? Yeah, there is already .py file here that, that is there, right? So we'll create that pi file. And then in this, we're going to be creating the Streamlight uh, uh, app that we have, there, right? So the Streamlight is also installed. If you don't, if you, if you don't, if you don't have, don't have Streamlight, what you can do is you can just say pip install Streamlight. 
uh, Streamlit, and it should be able it it should be installed in it, right? So to able to be able to see if uh, you know Streamlit is uh, opening, what we're going to do is we're going to say import Streamlit um, as st, right? Then I'm going to say st dot title, and I'm going to give it a small title insurance application. Right, save it, and then I'll just go to the terminal part of it here in this terminal, and I'm going to basically say stream lit run app dot file. Right. So what this does is basically it uh, it it sort of creates this application which is going to be looking like this. Right now it doesn't have anything. We're going to be putting a lot of things within that uh, place. But yeah, uh, as you can see now, like, you know, we, we built, built the main part. We just now need to put all of these elements or uh, these things together, right? We're not, we're not going to be doing so much uh, of it uh, here, but we are just going to be simply doing a much more basic version of this app uh, in this. Rohit, hope you are able to get that. But um, you know, if it is not there, just skip for now and try to do it later. Okay, cool. So so far with me, guys. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. So app building. You want to see how easy it's going to be building apps. Uh, within Python. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to import a bunch of other libraries also. I'm going to be importing Py caret obviously in this Py caret. From Python dot regression, we're going to be importing now load model, right? Instead of making recreating the model and then predict model here, right? So remember, like we built the model here, so building processes we are not going to be creating it, right? We're going to be creating the predict model in this particular location, right? So what this means is that whatever pickle file that we created here, that is this pickle file, we're going to import it within this code and then uh, predict, do the prediction, right? So that's why we're going to be loading the model and then predicting the model that we have here, right? So that's that's the primary stuff that we're going to be doing here. And also the other things that we will be importing is uh, pandas as pd, and with pandas we also require numpy as np, right? So all of these libraries, and then obviously um, first we will begin by loading the model, and the load model we are going to be saying model is equal to load model and then models name we are going to be giving it here right so the model name that we have here is this model name right and i'm just going to go here and then paste it in. we don't need to give the extension here but we load I mean, we load the model and that's sufficient for us right now obviously we need we need to then also create the user inputs uh, for that particular for this uh, app right so for that, I'm going to basically give a run, uh, uh, a run function here where we're going to place everything within that particular thing, right? So that that way it runs, and uh, within this run, obviously you want to put this title, right? And then towards the end, you want to run this. Uh, you want to uh, basically do this if because remember we are building an application is equal to main. These are some environment setups and things that we want to run. We just say run, right? 
So basically, now even if you if, even if this is uh, you know run, it basically helps you to uh, organize things and put things in, in order, right? So nothing will happen as such anything on on this particular app yet. Uh, your app will still be loading, but you know we just structured the page in such a way that uh, all of these elements are there, right? So we have those elements. Uh, obviously, and then um, you you want to basically add a sidebar stuff also so that uh, we can we can see the sidebar that we have here something like this. So we want to create some of these side uh, sidebar elements, right? We're not to be creating this, but let's just create these uh, placeholder elements that we have, right? So I'm just going to place the sidebar stuff first, right? Uh, and it's going to be something like. This. So I'm going to say speed side bar, and I'm going to give um, let's say dot info, uh, and then give the the piece of uh, code, right? This app is created using five carat and string. Right, so if you save it and then look at this particular information here, you'll see there's this sidebar getting created where I can just now reduce or close that in and then bring it back up. Right, so this is that uh, piece of code that we have here, similar to this. Right, now obviously uh, I'm also going to add a link to to this so that uh, it, it just stays there, and that's basically an advertisement of my YouTube channel. So that's how I just call it here, right? So I'm just going to paste my link of my YouTube channel within this space, right? So you can see the app that you're building, guys. It's it's like instantly getting updated, and you don't need to relaunch it uh, again and again, right? So it's very easy to sort of build the apps uh, going forward, right? You just make the change, and it's already reflecting within it, right? So you don't have to be um, you know, doing a lot of a uh, lot of these things uh, to be doing it right. I'm also going to paste, uh, bring some images. Or obviously, you you want to bring some images on top of it also, right? So I'm just going to say import um, PIL as import um, from PIL. Sorry, from PIL import image from PL import image and I'm going to also load uh, uh, image hospital right uh, the hospital image it's not here so I'm going to go and pick it up from the old one that I've already created there is this image that I will just simply come here and paste it right so this one this is the one, this is the image I want to load and display on the sidebar. So I can do that uh, easily. I'm just going to say image hospital is equal to image, not the capital I, sorry. That's going to be image dot open. And I'm going to give this particular file. Sorry. Right. This is the file that I'll be giving, right? And then obviously I want to display just below this part of it. So I'm going to say dot sidebar dot uh, image. And I'm going to give this image hospital that we have here, right? Copy that and I'm going to paste it here. Save it, right? And if you go back to the app that we have here, this map uh, refresh the app you should be able to see an image and obviously you can put anything of of the nature that you want to put but yeah you you got the drift of putting this particular thing here, right now once that is done um this elements are done um what we can do is now take all of these elements that we have all of these things that we need to be putting there right so Obviously, we put all of these headings and all of that uh, there. 
but now we also want to you know put a, a put up a, put up a lot of these uh, elements so that uh, we can put this input right so i'm going to capture the inputs from the user here and go see how easy it's going to be to sort of capture the inputs right so i'm going to say age is equal to right and i'm going to say st dot number input now age is our number input right and i'm going to say the age uh, is what i'm going to be saying minimum value is depending on the context that you have here right? so i'm just going to be putting it as one uh, max for value max underscore value is going to be 100 right so that's the uh, maximum value and at uh, what sort of current value that you want it to be holding? You can say 25 or let's say 21 or something like that, right? So this will be the default value that the that the app will hold whenever it's open, and this is the age variable that that you want to capture. Uh, like this is the tag that we're giving it, like the label, minimum value one, maximum value 100, and this is the thing, right? So if I save this, um, save this, and go back to my app, now we should have an input here. Right. This is the input. Like you see, twenty-one is the mini, uh, the the minimum value, uh, like the default value. But I cannot. The minimum value is obviously one, and I cannot put anything beyond one zero one. Right. It has to be a value which should be hundred. So that's the maximum value anybody can put. Right. So yes, I'm just going to leave it at the default. But you get the drift. Uh, the user can now basically select the age variable and then um, have have some of the selections done, right? So, so that's the age. Uh, quite similarly, what we are going to be doing now is replicating this same process for the rest of them, right? So I'm just going to like copy some of the codes that I've already written so that you can just quickly go past this. But I have the sex variable, now the select box has male and female. Then you have like a number input again, which is BMI, it's very similar to what we have here, right? This is going to be a select box, which is going to be a drop down, like a male or female. This is going to be a select box, like, um, and uh, the number of children can be like what, zero to 10. So we're going to be placing them uh, in such a way, right? So if I just refresh it here, sorry, I refresh it here, you should be seeing all of these inputs that are available, and I can also be selecting some of these uh, values that are available. Right, so it makes it super uh, easy to get the user inputs. But within the app, you also see that we have this smoker, non-smoker uh, part of it. Right, so you you want this element, and let's see how we can get that element also. Right, so to be able to get that, uh, we are going to be using a checkbox code here. And this is the code that we'll be looking at, right? So it will be like something like if st dot checkbox, right? And we're going to call this smoker checkbox, right? And if this is the checkbox, depending on the value, smoker is equal to yes. Right, and then else smoker is equal to no. Right, so we we now also have a checkbox which is which is going to be like choose you know if this button is checked, right, then it's going to be yes else it's going to be right so that's the value that we are doing and we're trying to basically mimic the input that we have right these are very easy to fill but again this is a um, yes or no wala, uh, thing so that's why we are putting a checkbox there rather than a drop down or something like that, right and similarly then the last piece of uh, thing we want another drop down which is going to be the region drop down right so i'm just going to copy that uh, for doing it quicker. So I'm just going to do another select box like this, select box like this, where you have the region and all of the drop downs that are available, right? So if I come back here and refresh it, you'll have that smoker checkbox and the, the regions that we have there, right? So all of these things are now present.
so cool now obviously uh, last part of it is uh, you know you want to you've loaded the model but you've not really used it right like um typically what what should happen now is that anything the user inputs there should be something in the background like this calculation that we did right that calculates the stuff and then gives the value or displays the value right that's what we want to get done in this particular piece of right so as of now there is no output right so i'm just going to say output is equal to uh, is equal to something like this um i don't have any output as of now but i want a variable that is that has output that will obviously fill the values uh, with it right then i'm also going to create a dictionary uh, an input dictionary so what this input dictionary does is basically all of these inputs that you are providing right it, it sort of puts it into a data frame so that we can then submit it into that model equation uh, and and get this value right so we need two things we need we need the inputs and the coefficient the co the models we have the model we have it right this is the deployment model right? but we don't have the inputs that users right so user gives all of these inputs we need to store those inputs right so that's what we are doing here i'm just going to say call this as in, input dictionary right and i'm going to basically create a dictionary that says age for age is going to be from the age variable right um age is going to be from the age variable then the next we will get the sex from sorry from the sex variable comma and then bmi from the bmi variable comma children from children variable okay so what else do we have so four of them is over we need a smoker so this is the smoker variable that that we have here and we want to basically get the smoker uh, input from here, right so we'll say smoker is going to be smoker right comma and the last thing is obviously region so i'm going to say region is going to be region ensure that capitals are uh, present in, in that particular you know? so basically anything that these are the variable names right so this this names are the values that you want to get within this particular locations right and these are obviously the same names that are that that are present within this particular column right so this column names should match in the quotation because that's a column right like and then you obviously convert this into a data frame right so to convert it into a data frame because that's the input that will be given right so that input data frame is going to be obviously converted into pandas dot data frame and then you provide in this particular input dictionary so that it converts into a panda uh, pandas data right so basically now what we what we did we basically created a name input which just has this one one parameter right so it has like whatever the user has submitted that parameters along with the 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 names that are there and obviously this is not there right this is what we want to predict right so we don't have this we have all of these inputs that the user provided and the pickle file so we will pass into that pickle file and then predict the charges right that's the step that will be there yeah thanks thanks to you for that input anyway so that's that's what will be getting done in this next piece of code right so what we need to do is obviously make the prediction now this so how the prediction will be done is we need to have this button so we have this ht button 
right? And we're going to call this as predict, right? It's going to be called as predict. And then obviously the predict output, sorry, output, output is going to be is equal to predict. Yeah, so we basically want to predict the model, right? And uh, sorry, just predict within Python, right? So it's going to be predict model is equal to the model that we had created on, on the top that we have, right? So you can see this model that we created, we're going to give that as the model. Using that model, you want to predict the inputs uh, basis, the input data frame that we have here, right? So input data frame, is equal to this input data frame that we need to be using, right? So that's the two inputs. You need a model and you need the inputs, right? Just like this file, you have the model that is built here and the inputs, then it's going to basically put together and then get you this particular output, right? So that's what this, this output means. And then this output, finally, what we will be doing it is we will obviously put uh, the dollar this is not the right way to do it, but for quick and simple way to do it. I'm just going to put the dollar in front of that particular, uh, this thing, and I'm going to convert that into a string, right? So I concatenate the string with the output that I get, right? And then finally, after that prediction is done, right? You want to display that output. to display that output right so st dot i'm going to use a success message here right and then i'm going to give the output the insurance sorry insurance amount is with a curly bracket that's this right the format and then give the output that we have, right? So this output that we generated, we want to basically now display it in this particular form, right? So obviously these all things are not visible, so I did not refresh and show, show you, but this will be visible now, right? So basically this is taking the user inputs and then predicting what it should be and then, then displaying that particular output. So if I go back to my application now, hopefully it should be there, uh, wait, errors as an index something is wrong. Pause thing as an index. Hmm, where is this error? Raise some value error. Some value error is happening here. So we need to see it's with the dictionary or something like that. So let's see what's happening there. Okay, so we have this output, we have this input dictionary, which is good. Okay, I need to provide this into a square bracket because that's a list that we're providing to data frame and that should do the magic. Predict. Okay, it's predict model, it's changed. So we have to use this one also. Okay, sorry, my bad. Uh, from last time I've done it in Python to now it has changed. So it's going to be predict model. Anyway, so that is done. And if I refresh the file now, hopefully it should work. Okay, so basically you can see all of the inputs that we have. Uh, I'm just going to, you know, choose any one of this and say predict and predict model what an expected argument okay it shouldn't be predict model it should be predict you know what this is 
predict is not there. So there has been some change. So let's see what the change is. Should we predict model? Let's go back to pie carrot. Supervised and regression. Okay, so let's see safe model, predict model. So you have this estimator. To just need to give that estimator directly. Right, so I think we don't require model is equal to just get the predictor directly. And data is equal to metadata. Okay, I think this should be doing it. Let's see, let's run it. Sorry. Five. Yeah, it's a predict. Okay, it is giving a value, but it's actually giving a lot of other things also along with it. We don't want that. We just want this particular value. But yeah, we got the answer uh, for now, right? So if you do this, the model is run and then you get this particular output, right? So what is the output? Let's see. The output is this. Return information goes printed in Okay, so basically there has been some change which means we need to only get this value. So each one, there's all we don't require. Okay. So it's giving a data frame definitely, which means we need to basically take Uh, when you want the output, we need to take the label or index. So the label should be the one that we should be taking. Right, so if I just take just the label, I think so this should be doing the magic and getting the output. Okay. If I refresh it, predict. Okay, I still get this index somehow. Index is zero. Don't want the index zero. So we will take this dot value to get the answer. Hopefully that should be working. Mm -mm, no value. Oh, it got converted into strings. So. Mm.
just taking the first value of the index and let's see what I'm getting here. Scalar memory. Just trying to only get the value because a lot of other things are coming along with it. We don't want those things to be coming. So this is not coming. Save it. And refresh, you can see. Okay, still giving index zero. I don't want this index zero to be coming in. So, Let's see if that should be helpful. Yeah, it should be. Right, so we basically now got that amount. Uh, it basically predicts everything and just uh, gives this particular output, right? So basically now, um, this entire app is uh, done. Um, what, let's do a recap. Basically, what we did is we imported the stream light, stream lit, um, you know, library, which is uh, which helps us build this app. We also did the regression uh, load model and predict model. There has been one change between what I had done earlier and now. So we took care of all of that. We, we loaded the model, right? And then we set up all of these parameters, the side, sidebar, title. We captured all the un, you know inputs that the user provided, right? Like all of these as inputs, and which is tying back to all of the columns that are provided here in order for us to predict this one, right? So we did that. We took the output, we took the input, converted it into a data frame, and then, uh, you know, with the help of predict button, it basically calculates all of this output for us, um, and then you know displays that output in this particular format. Right? There are other things that we did to basically get this uh, app running, but now this entire app is uh, basically ready. Where you know this this app is running uh, nicely. The only step left now is we take this. Um, this app and then deploy it into the Heroku app, the Heroku background, right? So if you need to have a Heroku uh, sort of, uh, you, you need to have this Heroku account for launching this app. But what you can do is if you want to launch this uh, Heroku app, we can do it directly from GitHub, right? But there are a couple of other things that you need to be doing it. So what I'll do is, what are files I have done, I'm just going to be Saying added model in app, and I'm going to commit to me push to origin, right? And where is my data? Yeah. So, so you'll see that you'll you'll basically have this app dot uh, you know and create dot model. You have you'll have this deployment model images data is there. All of this is there. But this app will still not get launched because it requires a couple of other files, right? So if you see here, uh, the, the couple of other files that will be required typically is going to be a uh, requirements.txt. And then there is this, uh, you know, a setup.sh file that will be required, right? So this one and this file will be required. Uh, required. So how do I, how do we do that? There is a small piece of code that uh, that we need to be doing that will help us to do that. Uh, and I have some deployment codes there, right? So uh, if I just do pip freeze and say requirements.txt, this particular piece of code that is going to create the you know the requirements file for me, right? So what I'm going to do is I hit Control C for closing the tab and I'm going to basically write this pip freeze requirements.txt. So what this will do is it will create this requirements text and it will basically have all of those, um, you know, uh, 
all of those uh, basically uh, libraries we used to build this model and it sort of dumps all of these things right so if there is any issues at lot the the while deployment this this file is going to be take care and installing the right packages while we are deploying right so we have this requirements file right and this other thing that we need to do is there is this um you have to create this setup dot uh, sh file right and we just need to copy paste this particular piece of code that is there so what i'll do is typically i just take it uh, from the other one that i have created setup dot sh and you can just take it from my file also and i'm going to put it here and paste it here right so that setup dot sh is now available here you will see that again it's a streamlight app streamlit app um you can put a email id if you want to put i'm just going to put it like excel and gmail.com some credentials and some of these uh, files that that will be there, right so all all of the files that are uh, required will will definitely be all of the things will be available directly here and all we need to now do is ensure that these files are also um, added and committed to the main right so once that is done uh, basically we should have that setup dot uh, sh and requirements dot txt right let me just check once more if if i have all of the things we have this git ignore git attributes um hospital requirements yeah so all of that is done there right so now obviously we want to take this this particular thing and then load it into heroku and that's how we'll be doing it right so i'm going to say create new app and the app name is um, ml ml app live and i'm going to call it as bi live oh it should be dashes so we dashes like this Okay, so this should be good. Um, I'll just choose Europe as a region and say create app. Obviously, you need to connect it to a GitHub uh, account here, and the 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 app name is String Lit String Lit and search, and you'll see that app. Uh, that we did here is uh, available so i'm going to say connect it here right and i'm not going to do this but i'm just going to say deploy the main branch we just have main branch right so if you go further into a lot of things there will be a lot of other things but you just want to deploy this particular branch right so what it will do is in this while while it's deploying it on the cloud it's going to be installing the python app it's going to be uh, installing all the versions that we have mentioned and all of the requirement files something failed here okay there is no such directory as this uh, part of it so we'll have to resolve some of those things uh, as this is not going to be able to get some of these uh, directories there so what i'll do is anywhere there is this file sort of a thing i'm going to remove that hopefully this should do the trick and it should be a much simpler one but let's see okay, 
so many things. This. And hope that all of that installations of PyCaret and uh, Steam Deck should be able to install all of these uh, dependencies. Just want to check five characters there. Yeah, five characters there, and streamlet should be there. Yeah, yes, that's also there. What is this? Bunch of these things which are there. So you'll get used to doing all of these things, guys. Uh, don't worry about this. Actually, yeah. Save this. And let's see if we can make all of these changes. Push it. Almost done, guys. Yeah, and let's deploy this branch again. Hopefully, this will do the trick. Uh, wait back and let's let that installation get done. Okay, guys, so those who are watching, um, please let me know if you have any questions. I know there's a lot to take in, so you'll have to watch this video again to do a lot of these things. But um, this is what it is. This is what uh, ML apps, this is how ML apps are developed in the core. Okay, there is something that is failing again here. ML case, the MKL service is not found. Okay, that. So, which means what I will do. Which, uh, what should, uh, what Vivek, what do you want? Okay, I'm gonna keep it very simple so that. And I'm going to keep only stream light so that I'm just going to keep these two. Hopefully, this should be doing the trick. Commit, push. At file where it where it got del del deleted. Ah, it's, it's okay, no problem. Let, let's let's see here. I'm I'm just doing a very simple one. So let's see if that works for me or not. So let's see. Hopefully. So those two typically will install all the dependencies that are required, so it makes it much more easier. Okay, so we'll sit back and see the installation going on. Managing libraries and uh, handling all of these things uh, with ever ending updates is one crucial thing. So, you want to know which uh, version you are using for developing and install that while deploying it, right? So that you don't run into any issues 
while deploying it. Right, so as you can see, all of the dependencies are also getting installed automatically. So keeping it simple was better. Hmm. <clears throat> Almost there, guys. Hmm. Seems like the installation is a success. Okay, couple of seconds, it should be done. Yeah, it should be done. There are no errors. Okay, so this should be live in some time. Hmm. Seems like, yeah, it's live. So let's just click on this link, right? And then see if that app is there. It's taking some time. So. Yeah, it's still the, it's still building it. So after this is done, guys, this. This app should be uh, be able to be live, right? So I'm just going to drop this link in the read my uh, in save me file here. Okay. Save and that should be doing it right. So push to origin and it should be doing it right. So it 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 will take some time to build uh, the thing, but yeah, this is what this app building process is there right. Quite simply put, we have this data. What we did is we took the data, we built a model, we got this output. We use this output and the user inputs to predict the insurance amount and put all of this together into an app, which the user can then select and then look at the output like we are able to look at, such as this, right? So that's all for today, guys. Um, thank you for watching uh, this particular thing. I hope this was not too complicated, uh, but this is what it is. This is uh, you know, a couple of other, these apps, if you build, you will be automatically be very uh, uh, accustomed with some of these things. So I'm just going to drop the link there in the comment section and I'll be sharing with participants. Right, so yeah, that link is there and everything is placed within that file. So remember, you need this requ the requirements and setup dot SH to be able to run it properly um, and rest of the things will be automatically be 
taken care right so that's all for today guys thank you hope you like this guys uh, yeah data is there within that uh, vivek the data is present here uh, in this in this slide so you can get the data here hope you got that feedback okay anyway guys good um, so give your feedbacks guys to board infinity and they'll pass the feedback on to me and let me know what else what all uh, else we can do or cover right so thank you have a nice day and see you again